welcome to another edition of Tiaka TV and what has been a big week for the team at Karaka. Um, Jamie, how's your week been, mate? Yeah, good. Yep. As you say, big week, um, big week up at Karaka there, races and then um, staying through. So um, they were on the other side of it now. And yeah, Dave, Dave bought some lovely horses with with Mark and Karen and the team. So um, yeah, there's something there for everybody in our opinion. Absolutely, and, and and I guess just quickly touching on that. So, um, the Tiakao team purchased a total of thirty-one yearlings across, um, I guess, book one, um, and just over a total of um, eight million dollars. Um, and there's a couple more purchases probably likely in the coming days. So, a whole heap of or a real mixture of um, new stallions in there with um, Ace High. I don't think we've had a Nakoni in there before. Um, Stephanos Embellish seems to be leaving some nice types. Kermadec, Seamus Award, and of course. Um, the, the the new um, hot stallion on the block, um, Justify as well. And then, of course, a real mixture of those tried and true stallions that the team has had a lot of success for with in the past, including yourself, Jamie, with the Savabels, the Snitzels, the Exceeding Excels, Zoo Stars, and the, the newly emerging Tavachi as well. So a real mixture of nice stallions there. Anything that caught your eye, particularly from what the team purchased? Uh, yeah, I think... Um um obviously dave's been promoting his cult syndicate and his philly syndicate um and the class of horse that are in those two syndicates is quite incredible really he's been able to sort of buy the best three or four cults and the best three or four fillies in the sale in our opinion um and it's all very well to go out and pay the big money and, and buy the pedigrees and buy the type but we've also tried to to shop for some value uh, for some horses that we think are going to get up and go as correct a million types of horses and also, you know, horses that we think are going to stay a little bit and, and probably not be seen until, um, you know, not, not, not be their best until they're sort of, you know, Christmas three-year-olds and getting out over 2000 meters. So um, yeah, we, we've, you know, d done our best to, um, to buy in a, a variety of different price ranges and, and different types and different pedigrees. Ultimately, we're trying to buy athletes, and we think that we've done that as best as we can. And there's some good examples of that, I guess, um, in the past, um, such as Emma Elena, who didn't really run at two, but then came out and um, and obviously ran a, a very close second in the crack a million three-year-old, and then went on to win the Oaks as well. So um, some of these horses do tend to take time, but they can produce great results down the line as well. Um, isn't that right? Yeah, 100%. It's just about uh, knowing your horses, and, and if they – if they uh, show ability and look like they need time, then we're more than happy to wait. Um, uh, if they want to get up and get going, then, then we're happy to just cruise along with them on, on, on that side of things as well. So, yeah, I think importantly it's about about knowing the horses, knowing their pedigrees, knowing what they're able to, um, you know, able to handle, and, and uh, nobody's better at doing that than uh, what Mark Walker will be. Absolutely, and I, I guess for a bit of education for the viewers, um, the, the horses, when they are broken in at Tiaki, I started, they come into this, their stable for some early education, and from that point you decide when they're ready to trial? Yeah, so the, the sort of system is, uh, I guess, five to six weeks, maybe a touch longer in terms of the breaking in process. Um, whether that's the right word for, for it or not, I'm not entirely sure, but it's more an educational phase where they learn to be uh, learn to be ridden and mouthed and all of those sorts of things and then they usually come into town for a couple of weeks and they might have a little quiet jump out uh, and then at that stage it's decided whether they go out uh, for a decent spell whether they need three or four months out or whether they might be an early maturing horse that could be a two-year-old in which case they might only go back out for a month uh, but obviously with the sale being back a little bit further this year that the um the luxury of time that you had when the January sale was isn't there this year. Um, so most of these horses will be going off and getting broken in, in pretty shortly. Um, and then that gives them a chance to um, get through once, have a little bit of a break, and then be back in when the weather turns and keep them warm through the winter. And, and I guess that's the great game as well. You don't really know what you've got um, until you get them along and um, get them to that first set of trials in um, July, August, September, um, and then make a plan for their racing career from there so um lots of lots of horses to pick and choose from um on the website um from a range of budgets as jamie mentioned um right from 40k up to um the more expensive filly that um, dave purchased the fastnet rock out of memories for of you for 850 so lots of different types of horses um so get involved and um 
fill out an inquiry form on the website or use the live chat function. We'd love to have you in the team. But I guess that's it for the sales from our perspective. And uh, a quick look at the um, the week that's been, obviously, Derby Day on Saturday at Ellerslie. Um, we had three wins there um, with pre defer on the bubbles. And, of course, great to see Sword of State chalk up another one as well. Can you talk us through some of those horses quickly? Yeah, I thought uh, pre defer was, um, you know, um, in the right race. He hadn't won a race in 12 months. He hadn't won since he won that day last year. Um, and fortunately, we've got, um, you know, Palmer riding very well off a 3K allowance and, and also Joe riding really well off a, off a 1KG allowance. So um, Palmer did a great job on him. The horse the horse, uh, the horse, horse ran really well. Um, on the bubbles, was back to his best, had a little bit of luck in running um, and was there to be shot down and they couldn't. Um, so he was back to his best and that's going to stand him in good stead for the Levin Classic in a couple of weeks and, well, sorry, in, in eight days' time now. Um, and... Uh, sort of state was brilliant. Um, he's given a 10 out of 10 ride by Lethinus, and um, uh, he was in for the fight and got the better of you know a pretty handy, uh, pretty handy filly. So, um, yep, really thrilled with those those three guys. They're, um, they're proper horses and, and um, all deserve to, to win on, on such a big day. Absolutely. And sort of state, um, do we see him again in um, Cambridge? I know it's been well spoken or well documented through the week. Will we see him, him line up again later in May? Uh, we're just sort of working through that at the moment. Um, Dave was keen to get through the sales and then sit down and have a bit of a talk, you know, amongst ourselves and with uh, with Brendan and Henry. Um, it's sort of looking like he might be going to uh, Brisbane, uh, but we just need to sort of work out what we're going to do, how we're going to approach it. We we have had a bit of success over there. We took um, Heroic Valor over there and he got beat a... Um, got beat a lip in the Gold Coast Guineas, and that could well be a race that might suit sort of state. Um, so, yeah, we just need to need to work through that in the next little while. But, um, yeah, exciting times ahead for him. He, he, he did a great job. And Harak Valor, of course, is doing a great job at stud there. I think he had a couple of horses in the Magic Millions this year. Um, so moving across to um, this weekend's car, we're quite light on runners, um, but we kick off in Trentham and race three, the Harrison's Carp at three-year-old. So um, set weight and penalties over the 1,200 metres. We have got two horses lined up, of which I think only one's going to start, which will be Cote de Burn, um, two starts for two wins, draw barrier six with Joe Kamarudin on board. Yeah, so we're going to split him and uh, Quattro Quinto up. Uh, so Cote de Burn, he's, he had a little break after his last win, and we gave him a little quiet trial there the other day. He trialled nicely, and, and he appears to be uh, he appears to be going well. So you know he's going to be one of our better chances for the day. He's a horse that's got a fair bit of um, natural ability, and expecting him to be right up there, hopefully. Absolutely. And race five, the Mana Plumbing Limited 1200, rating 74 bench from benchmark. We've got Quattro Quinta drawn barrier one with Joe Kamarudin on board again. Yeah, he's really disappointing first up this horse. I don't know what to put that down to. He tried well before then. Um, whether it was right-handed or what it was, I'm not entirely sure, but we've just staying the course a bit there with him. Gone back left-handed. Um, hopefully he can get up on the speed. He's, he's raced really well at Wellington before. Um, you just have to take him on trust a little bit off his last start. Great. And um, that's Trentham for us, I think. And so, um, a, a small but select team um, down the line there. We move across to um, the Auckland Thoroughbred Racing at Pukekohe Park in race three, the New Zealand Bloodstock Insurance Pearl Series race. Um, it's a maiden for the Phillies and Mares over 1,200. And we have got um, I'm Not Bossy, John Barrier 6 with Opie Bosson on board. Yeah, she's going well at home. Um, she's had a little bit, a little while between runs. We were sort of, I guess, in two minds whether we step her out to 14 or whether we give her one more 1200. Ultimately, we've decided to go 1200 once more. Um, she's got OP on from an ice draw, should be a good chance. And race for the Mount Shop 1200, um, another maiden race. We've got um, a horse who I thought was quite impressive last start and running, I think, second or third. And Kai, John Barrier, one with OP Boston on board. Yep, again, sort of, we were in two minds whether we go 1,400 or not. Um, we just spaced her out and decided to give her one more at, at 1,200. She's got the soft draw, she's got OP on, uh, and she is probably our best for the weekend, I would have thought. Great, and race six, the Hanui Farm, 1,400, another maiden race. Got a horror draw here in barrier 18, and the horse is Belle of the Ball with OP Bossin on board. Yeah, she was really good first up. She's a slow-maturing filly that's needed a little bit of time. Um, but she's uh, starting to hit her straps now. 
um, as you say, awful draw, but uh, La Flora Bell drew out there at the last Pukeko meeting. And there is a really nice run down the back straight, bit of time to get over and, you know, to sort of try and ride a handy and get up and across. Um, so expecting her to run well with luck and running. Great. And race seven, New Zealand Bloodstock Insurance Pearl Series race, rating 65 benchmark for the Phillies and Mares over 1,400. Two horses, first of which is Madame Moet, race, uh, sorry, barrier six, Michael McNabb on board. Yeah, both of these uh, mares are going well. Madame Moe won nicely at uh, Madame Matter with a bit of give in the ground. She's had a quiet trial since then, um, jumps from barrier six at this stage. Um, we won't rush her too much. Um, but, yeah, she looks to be a nice chance. And midnight special drawn at barrier seven with OP Boston on board. Yeah, won at the last meeting there at Counties. Um, uh, steps up into the 65 grade and it's never easy to go bang bang like through you know from a maiden to a 65 there's there's not many horses that can do that but uh, these two mares are, are both going well and midnight special has done some nice work during the week everything's gone according to plan no reason why she can't be in the thick of it great and of course we that's the last of the runners there at Pukkoi we head away from where we will see the crack a million in 2023 across to where we saw the crack crack a million this year at Ellerslie for Auckland Cup Day and we kick off in race six the group one sustain mistakes um it's for the two-year-old set weights it's obviously group, uh, group one um we've got last start crack a million winner dynastic from barrier one with Opie Boston on board yep happy with him he had a nice couple of easy weeks in the paddock after after the millions uh, which he needed um and he seems to have uh, done well since then he had a nice trial the other day he's done some nice work since goes into the race in great shape op rides him he's got the gun gun barrier draw um and he's going to be up and behind the speed not spending any petrol and and be a really good chance and nothing wrong with what maven bells achieved in her career to date drawn barrier seven with ryan elliott on board yeah she's a winner uh been very impressed with her she continues to raise the bar we were thrilled with the way that she won last time. I thought she was really impressive when winning the Matamata Breeders Stakes. Seems to have taken no harm from the run. This is going to be a third run in six weeks is our only concern, uh, but we've taken her along nice and easily. And haven't tried to tax her too much on the uh, on the training track. Um, the only thing about her there is she's drawn an awkward barrier in seven. Um, so it's, you know, she's, she's going to need to be right at the top of her game to be winning from out there. We'll just sort of see how they jump away, but Imagine she's going to be behind midfield and getting down centre track. Great. And I choose you, Barrier 4. Michael McNair wraps up the runners. Yeah, we believe she's the improver out of Matamata. She was going into that race off a bit of a freshen. Uh, she seems to have done well since then. Sidewinkers go on. Expect her to be up on speed. Um, this didn't go right-handed very well in the Eclipse when she got caught 3D without any cover. Um, but we've given her as much practice going right-handed as we can here at Matamata on Wednesday and Friday mornings when we work in that direction. Um, so everything's gone according to plan with it, and uh, I don't think there's a hell of a lot between the, our three runners in that race. Great. So if you had to pick one to put on top, who would it be? Uh, probably Dynastic from the draw. Absolutely. He was definitely impressive trialling against the older horses there at Avondale a few weeks back. Um, so that um, wraps up the runners in the Group 1's esteemer, and we head down to the next Group 1 of the day, the Bone Crusher New Zealand Stakes. Um, you've had a lot of success in this race in the past. So um, under weight for age conditions over the 2,000 metres, we've got um, last start place getter, um, Amarilina, drawn barrier four with Opie Boston on board. Yeah, she's going well. Uh, I think she's been looking for this trip. Um, she's great at Otaki. was good before that, the 1,400 metres race at, at Ellerslie. And, um yeah we've been really happy with her work's been great um she's got a nice draw it's a it's a good field coventina bay going to be hard to beat uh, as well the chosen one uh but she heads up there in, in great shape and she's a winner at ellisley she loves the course and expecting it to be you know hopefully a top three chance great and uh, moving down to um i use the marquee race on the card race three the group two barford and thompson auckland cup um, open set weight and penalties over 3,200 metres, the same distance as, of course, the Melbourne Cup and Sydney Cups. Um, we've got Tiakau Caliburn, John Barrier 10 with Opie Boston on board. Yep, he goes into the race in good shape. He didn't have a lot of luck in the Nathans last week, uh, but he's had a good week here. Everything's gone according to plan. If he is to win this race, he will need to be at his absolute uh, best because he has been disappointing. Uh, but he's a genuine stayer who likes racing on top of the ground. 
uh, we don't get many opportunities to get him out to this sort of trip. So um, interesting runner. If everything goes his way, he's a chance, but um, he usually runs into some sort of bad luck or, or he's not good enough, but we'll just see how we get on there on Sunday. Sunday, yeah, sorry. Sunday, there you go. So that, um, that wraps up the, the runners on the card. And I think you mentioned earlier your best of the day was who? Kai. Kai, there you go. Um, good, thanks for refreshing my memory there. Um, okay. So that wraps up the, the runners for the weekend. Um, next week, we head across to um, Trentham for Oaks Day and, of course, Levin Classic. It looks like it's going to be a bit of a wet week ahead in Wellington looking at the forecast, Jamie. Yeah, yeah. Um... Hopefully it's not as wet as what that forecast is saying. Um, but anyway, we've got horses that will handle it and horses that won't. But um, um, sort of getting to the you know, the end of the season now with the better races. Um, but we've still got a few more shots to fire. So let's see how we get on. So runners in the Levin Classic include On the Bubbles, Zaytaku, Imperatres. Help me out here. Mohawk Brave. I wish I, I wish I win for oh, McNabb. There's five of them there, and in the Oaks, you've got Self Obsession and Ballon Rouge and the Perfect Pink. So, plenty of good horses there to keep an eye out for next week, and we will catch you next week for a full wrap up of, um, I guess, I'll lead into Oaks Day as well. So, thanks for your time this morning, Jamie, and we'll come catch you guys next week. <laughs>